we're going to get started. Now it's pretty much 3 o'clock. Yeah. Hopefully everyone in here is for the right panel. We're Severus Snape and the Marauders. We're a Harry Potter fan film. If you're not here for that, we still want you to stay anyway. So. <laughs> you can't leave. So. <laughs> you can never leave. Um, yeah, so we are, again, a Harry Potter fan film. Uh, we raised money on Kickstarter about two years ago to make this film, and it was a successful campaign. So um, our film premiered on YouTube of March this year, and we've been basically touring conventions all over the U.S. since then, promoting the film. Um, how many of you guys have actually seen the film already? Anybody? Oh, good. <laughs> a few people, that's we'll great. Keep the commentary to a minimum. <laughs> um, so we'd like to get started and we'd like to introduce you to everybody that's here representing the film. Justin Zagri, he's the director of the film and the writer. Yay. My name is Liana Manassian, I'm the producer. Yay. And then over here we have the lovely Kevin Allen, who played Sirius Black. We have Peter Pettigrew, which is Zachary David. <laughs> 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 it is Peter. <laughs> there is no other. He's there basically can be the only same one. <laughs> Danny J is Lily Evans. <laughs> and Barry Schwanhauser as James Potter. <laughs> we don't have our Severus Snape or our Remus Lupin today, but they are here in spirit. On the internet. Still yeah. Yeah. And we're actually we're live streaming this right now over the internet, so you guys are all on camera. Oh. Yeah. Say hi. Yeah. 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 So I think we're gonna we're gonna start with actually showing the film. The film is about 26 minutes long, and we hope you guys enjoy it. So sit back, relax, and I hope you like it. So what did you guys think? You like it? Be honest. Just a, just, a, <laughs> just a quick factoid for you. I let them the uh, oh, uh, closing credits play because not only is Alexander Arnson an amazing composer who composed this movie, that last track was recorded by a 65 piece live orchestra. Wow. In Hungary. In Budapest, oh, Hungary. Yeah, it's uh, pretty awesome. <laughs> Yeah. Um, okay, so I want to talk to the cast a little bit to uh, answer a few questions. Then we're going to open up to you guys if you have anything you want to ask, any burning questions. Um, or non-burning we'll, questions. Or non-burning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, after that, we'll do a little bit of Harry Potter trivia for some prizes. And then we have a special video at the very, very end that we'll show you, it's like with exclusive uh, footage. So, um, so the first thing I want to ask you guys, um, obviously there's a lot of expectation with playing existing characters, especially from the Harry Potter universe. Um, and so talk about like the pressure that you felt in order to live up to the expectations that um, you know existing fans already have for these characters. And how did what did you do to get prepared for your character and portray them in an accurate manner. Does anyone else want to start? <laughs> <laughs> start? Um, yeah. What a great place. I mean, I will, but... Can you I don't grab the mic for me? Um, oh, yeah, sorry. Pass that along. Just one That's going to be our mic. Can we... The center? Yeah. Do we know? I'm just going to hold this. Here. Act natural. <laughs> yeah. Um, for me, uh, playing Peter Pettigrew... He's, I mean, he's one of the most disliked characters in the entire <laughs> Harry Potter universe. Um, so, but I didn't... The reason everyone hates him are for things that, when this movie takes place, haven't happened yet. So I had a lot of opportunity to, like, not make him completely scumbag hateable. So I thought a lot about it, and, you know, I got to, that has to be part of him. He has to be kind of a cowardly loser. But at the same time, he can also be kind of a, a kid having fun in, you know, high school age with, with his friends. So I got to I got to play with a lot of things and and got to you make really make a lot of stuff because it's just not stuff that Rowling's put a lot of said a lot about um, and it kind of bridged the gap between the monster that we all know about later and the person that he was before that. Um, so I actually enjoyed that a lot for me. Hey, hey, hey thanks. Um, it's good snaps. It's great. Worse. Worse. <laughs> I'm the worst. I'm sorry. No. You don't have to do that. It's fine. Uh, okay. So. Thank you. James is, is uh, portrayed um, a little dark in this movie um, for good reason. 
so getting the script and reading that and kind of having an idea, having read the books of like what I thought James was, um, kind of marrying those two ideas was, was difficult but fun. I mean, James is a strong personality. You kind of have to be to have people who want to follow you and hang out with you and to make such an impact on others. You, you know, you have to stand out a little bit. So um, I kind of took the approach of, you know, what kind of person is James? Uh, and in this movie, it was sort of like he's someone who really respects his friends um, and the people he cares about, and he holds them kind of above everybody else. So he's somebody who would do a lot to protect those that he loves. And it's so to me, I got into my character of James by sort of looking at it like, you know, what am I willing to sacrifice for people in my life that I really care about? Like, what, how far would I go? for somebody that I either care about or feel I should protect or feel like I have a bond with. Um, that was sort of my way into uh, James as the character because there's not a whole lot written about him, just kind of the reverence that either his close friends or his hated enemies have to, to tell Harry about. So that's what I did. <laughs> hey, thanks. <laughs> Um, Lily was really fun to dig into and made me super nervous to, to jump into that character because there's so much we don't know about her and there's so much that is always painted in a positive light, which is true. Um, but I think that Lily's strongest qualities across the board were her love and her loyalty. F so for me personally, it was all about finding that connection between the characters. So even though Bridges might have been burned with Snape at one time, what's that love still like? Even though Bridges might have been burned with James one time or another, what's that love like? Um, and how deep do these ties run? So for me, it was a really cool puzzle piece, sort of, just kind of weaving in and out of, of how does she feel about each one um, with regards to those two character traits. So it was a really great thing to do, and it was super nerve-wracking the whole time because I'm like, what if people disagree with me? <laughs> what if they don't like it? Um, but that's welcome to the actor's world. That's kind of what we're supposed to do, and trust that your judgment is enough. So I was super excited to jump into an unknown character like Lily. Uh, I felt an amazing amount of pressure. Uh, like when I okay, so when I first got the audition notice. Uh, I was like, okay, I I have to get it right because I really want the gig. Um, and when I got cast, it was like um, it was like usual being usual being nervous in front of an audition. Like, oh, you know, I hope I get the part. I hope I do well. But then when I got it, I was like, oh dear God, I have to do well. <laughs> like, there's there's no excuse for not doing well now. Uh, I will be torn to shreds if I screw this up. Um, and so I started, to, I really dove into like re, trying to research um, Sirius and what people's interpretation of him as a, as a teenager was like. Um, so I looked, I looked at fan stuff and that just made it worse because it's all Ben Barnes and I'm not him. Um, and then I found this interview of uh, someone asking JK Rowling, like of all the people that are playing these brilliant actors who are playing your characters, like who's really nailing it? And she's like, oh, Gary Oldman has got Sirius Black perfectly. And I was like, well, great. Now I know what right is, but it's Gary Oldman. And <laughs> like, I'm also not him. And um, it, it was, a, I, I, I looked at passages in the books. I went back and followed them. I had the movies playing out of the background I, just to absorb as much of Sirius Black as I could. I put together a Pandora station based on, like, I, I asked people, like, okay, what is Sirius Black's, like, favorite Muggle songs? And I, so to prepare, like, I would, like, drive to set blasting my Pandora station as much as possible. And then if I could, I'd keep it in my pocket until, like, I finally got on to set and was like putting it away and then tried to act like I was cool and prepared. <laughs> but in truth, I was freaking out the day of, um, the whole time. Like I'm, I'm not, I'm not in it. I'm not, I don't have it. Wait, I'm not serious. What and was a serious black song? Like, do you remember my, my song? pick one? Yeah. My first pick was, um, it was, uh, number two is David Bowie's rebel rebel. My, <laughs> my number one serious black song is rolling stones. Um, you're a star. <laughs> and so like, and it's, it's so hedonistic, but I thought that fits. And so like in the car, like getting, walking to the bar set, I have my pocket playing, you're a star, you're a star. <laughs> like, um, but it, <laughs> I, dude, it was, it was bad. Um, it wasn't until like the camera was on me and I saw myself like in the costume in the setting. I was like, okay, I can pull this off. But till then it was crazy pressure. Awesome. How about you, Justin? All right, so um, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for that, that love. That's awesome. That was funny. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, watching these guys actually prepare for their roles was really great. Um, 
uh, Kevin Allen was very nervous uh, about the whole thing uh, until he saw the camera on him and fully lit, and then he's like, oh, okay, I'm serious black now. Um, uh, Garrett would actually like almost look like he was meditating to get, get ready. Uh, Paul, who played Remus, when he showed up, he just stayed Remus the whole time. Even when, even when he had a sense of humor about things uh, or would react to things, he had a very calm, kind of cautious demeanor about him, which is like the polar opposite of who Paul Stanko actually is. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll have you guys listen to something uh, later on. Oh, yes. uh, yes. <laughs> and you'll see what, 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 what other talents this guy has. So for me, writing these characters was, uh, there was a bit of pressure behind it. But there was pressure behind it because the fan community is kind of divisive on uh, their feelings for Snape and the Marauders. Uh, some people really don't like Snape. Uh, and other people love Snape. Some people love the Marauders, and others hate him. Uh, and I wanted to try and bridge the gap, but I also wanted to take a stance on some ways as to how characters are going to feel about each other. So there has to be a, a, a certain amount of conflict and stakes in the story. So uh, they're about to join this big wizarding war, and um, James knows what side Snape is going to go on. But he also knows that he's he used to be friends with his new girlfriend, and uh, he feels threatened by that. So old feelings come out when, even though in the books it says that James matured and grew out of it, he still hexed Snape in his seventh year. Um, so that meant that there was animosity between them, and I wanted to finalize that animosity in this movie. I wanted their final conflict to be in this movie. Um, and then choosing what skill level the each wizard was as far as a duelist was and Snape seemed kind of crazy overpowered well that's because there's evidence in the book that said so um so also, I, I was just phoning it in <laughs> <laughs> it's in like it's in the movie I was phoning it in <laughs> so I had to take a stance on what these characters would do and what I how I think they would act in certain situations and that took posed a risk and other there are comments on YouTube that said oh my god the characters are perfect and other people that are like they're completely out of character that's totally up it's totally their feel, thoughts and feelings but that's how I had to approach it is what are their motivations what are they really thinking about what are they what are their reactions to this war and their enemy Snape and Snape's enemies the Marauders yeah so you mentioned the duel which is a huge part of this film it's basically the climax of the film the huge fight between the Marauders and Snape so, going back to you, Justin, um, can you talk a little bit about the story of the duel and how you sort of coordinated that with everybody, um, choreography-wise, and like how you saw it in your head versus how it actually looked on film? Sure. Um, so, I wanted the fight to escalate, uh, and I wanted it to start out one-on-one -on -one between James and Snape, and then I and I wanted from the beginning there to be a very obvious. Uh, power difference between Snape and James. James is a very talented wizard, but from, like I said, what the evidence in the books, Snape knew more, more curses when he first came to Hogwarts than half the seventh year students. That meant a lot to me. Anything that James could do, a Patronus or different, different spells like Levy Corpus, Snape could either do or he invented in the first place. So that was important to me, that he was an extremely powerful wizard. Doesn't mean that James wasn't powerful. In fact, he had opportunities to disarm Snape. But because it went into his character that he wanted to scare him, not just disarm him, he, he missed out on those opportunities. So then it becomes two-on-one because Sirius is going to back up his best friend who's losing and possibly going to get hurt. And then Remus gets in the fight to try and end it quickly. And then Peter gets in the fight because the Marauders need the help. And Peter really doesn't want to. But through the strength of his friends, he can get, it, he can get in the fight. And... That's when, when uh, Sirius says nobody's going to have a nobody's going to have a route us so long as we're together. It said two things: Sirius is insecure about his about his friends uh, breaking apart, and it's true when they're together as a group, they're unstoppable. That's why they made this incredibly huge giant fiend fire. So, um, friend fire, right? Friend fire. <laughs> friend fire. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's, it, it, it's not killer. Um, and then when you finally get to the part where they surround him and then he overpowers them, that, then it becomes a different dynamic where he's just he, he's lost control of his emotions. And wizards have been known to have raw ma raw magic explosions. Voldemort had it in Deathly Hallows, and Harry had it when he was a kid and his hair grew back inexplicably after the Dursley cut it horribly, things like that. So that's where that came from. Is the, And then once Snape could take care of him one, one at a time, that's where it went. So... That's how I 
Just it tells a story. Work for sure. <laughs> um, so then, talking to you guys, um, what did you guys do to prepare for like the duel in terms of your characters? Like, with the people that are here right now, pretty much only Kevin had access to uh, Sirius Black's like dueling style because we saw that a little bit in um, what was it Order, Order of Phoenix. Phoenix. Um, but the rest of you, we didn't really see, maybe a little bit of Peter, um, how each of these characters dueled, and that's kind of, that was an important thing for this film, so what did you guys do in order to prepare for that? Like, um, cause Kevin, if you guys didn't know, Kevin is, <laughs> well, Kevin's a pirate, guys, a real life pirate. <laughs> And he has some choreography skills with fight choreography. So why don't why don't you start and like okay. talk about a little bit how you prepared for the duel? Yeah. Um, what what she means by she, I'm a pirate is um, I. <laughs> I've uh, I've been doing stage combat and fencing for like six or seven years by the point of this movie um, that we were filming it, and next week I'll be in London, Canada. <laughs> to, uh, with a theatrical pirate troupe um, doing shows there. So uh, I was trained in fencing, uh, and I uh, pretty much figured that Sirius Black, um, coming up from wealth and a very strict, rigid, like upper-class family, he probably would have gotten the wizard's equivalent of fencing lessons at a young age. And so I definitely want to incorporate that kind of um, proper dueling stance and, and being very... Uh, thrust parry with his movements um, but as I was saying like he starts to phone it in I, I felt like the more the marauders joined in the more he was like oh, okay now we're just partying now and kind of like loosened up his um, his aggression and just was kind of just having fun just whipping spells at Snake just to keep Snape busy um, yeah thanks for the help then yeah appreciate that yeah, I, I knew we could handle it so yeah in the fight. <laughs> I stopped it. <laughs> but what that's would, the cool. Ooh, that's a great question. I feel like I feel like she would have been uh, similar to kind of how Sirius is after she got com after he got comfortable. Like we're just here, we're doing this, we're doing that, but everything has a very deliberate um, yes is yes, no is no. She's a very black and white character, I feel like. Um, so there wouldn't have been a lot of there wouldn't have been a lot of room for error with her. So I kind of, now that I'm talking about it now, here at San Francisco Comic-Con, I wish I could have had a moment to duel. Um, yeah. I don't think we would have lost. I think we would have won. I think you would have won. I mean, not to we toot my own horn. We probably would have never fought. We would have negotiated out of this uh. one. Um, but no, I, I was really excited to, to, I mean, to stop the fight because in real life, I feel like that's kind of my personality as it is, is diffusing confrontation. As a person, I'm a great diffuser. Yeah, um, Lily's mere presence dis yeah. disarmed both of them. Yeah. And, and, true. and brought them back to their, their level of maturity. They so when both you th apologized. When you think about it, that's kind of the powerful, the most powerful force of all. Yeah. <laughs> is Lily. Is Lily. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. That's all. Should be on a t-shirt. Um, I have not been a pirate or fencing, uh, so I kind of came into this with... Uh, what I knew was people, and I was like, well, okay, I guess I'll come in at it as, like, a character, like, point of view. So I was like, all right, well, you know, James is an athlete. You know, he was on the Quidditch team, like, all the time. He was at Hogwarts, so he's athletic. You know, he is a bigger guy, so I felt like he'd have a much more sort of um, aggressive fighting style, you know. Somebody who's more about sort of brute force and kind of getting in with his spells. Um, and that's why I'm, one of my favorite parts is when he gets disarmed, he actually just kind of tackles Snape to the ground, <laughs> which <laughs> watching it again this time and watching Mick's face kind of decide <laughs> what I'm doing when I run at him was great. Um, so I, I came in at it from like that kind of perspective. You know, he is not afraid to get his hands dirty and get into a fight uh, muggle style if he needed to. So that's how I came at it. Uh, I, there's not a lot of like in the films at least there's not a lot of seeing of seeing um, Wormtail uh, fighting with his wand so I got I got to play around with it a lot and I decided to go from a character standpoint as well um, so so like in the film all of my all of my spells sorry all of my spells in the uh, in the in the film when I for, for my character I always thought were very direct and he's always focusing really hard because he's he's with m much more 
knowingly competent wizards. So he's he's trying to show up the best he can. So he's very direct and kind of timid and kind of small. Uh, and it actually fit the wand that I had made for the film. Um, that what was who's the n Brandon? Brandon Croy. He made he made wands for for me and Lily for the film because there aren't official character wands for for either character. Um, and and mine is this kind of short stubby. Uh, but it, I called it Scabber's Stabber because it looked like a, a shiv, <laughs> and and something just felt right about about just kind of poking it out to. Uh <laughs> I'm done now. <laughs> I felt like I was there. <laughs> um. So. Everyone here that was involved in the film, we were all Harry Potter fans before we got that's in that's into this film, including the actors. Um, so I just want everyone to sort of discuss like how you first got into the series, as well as how your relationship with Harry Potter has changed now since being in the film. So maybe Justin, you can start. Sure. Yeah. Um, I read the first book about a year after it came out. Uh, when it got really popular in America, it was just all over bookstores I read it. And I liked it, but I wasn't obsessed. Uh, I got obsessed after The Goblet of Fire. Uh, that book blew my mind, especially with the resurrection of Voldemort. Uh, when you got to see the, the, the Wizarding World on a larger scale, uh, when just stakes got real and someone died. And I'm like, okay, now I'm invested. And uh, Order of the Phoenix just continued on to that, and it just got better and better and better. And then I couldn't wait for all the big reveals at the end of book seven. So I was very much obsessed after the, after the Goblet of Fire. Um, I have a lot of other fandoms that I'm really into. My first fandom, uh, which is what I grew up with, is Star Trek. Um, and when I decided to make a fan film, uh, I was considering Star Trek, but uh, creating sets and costumes for Star Trek was too much. And when I thought about what could I do for a fan film that doesn't require to go overboard with wardrobe or sets or things like that, Harry Potter came to mind. So I made a, uh, another Harry Potter fan film before this called The Greater Good, uh, which is about Dumbledore and Grindelwald as teenagers. Um, and that got a lot of attention. And it actually got me a fan base which allowed me to raise money to make Severus Snape and the Marauders. So after this, I feel like it's been... It's been an amazing experience to have, to have people say this. This is this is canon to me. It's just it. First of all, it's really flattering, but it's also just like a, a, a surreal feeling to, to for people to have been dying to see the Marauders that I gave them a glimpse of them. Really, just a glimpse because it was only one scene, um, and how grateful they were to have that. And it's just something that I can't. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. It feels really good though. <laughs> Starting with Zach. Zachary. Good. I was thinking about the question and didn't forget it. Um, <laughs> it was how was the our relationship <laughs> with Harry didn't Potter changed? Forget change? it. What yeah, is this? Yeah. I'm making sure you guys didn't forget. Uh. How did you first get into the series, and then how is your relationship? Oh, great. Um, I <laughs> knew that. I knew that. Uh, Harry Potter. I was uh, actually a fan of the Harry Potter books since <laughs> before they were fa famous. Um, <laughs> oh my God. This is truth. He's a Someone. I am. I read the the first couple two books. I read them like on a whim. They was at a like a book fair. Didn't even know what it was. My best friend was like, "Hey, this is cool." So we both got it, and we're like, "Oh, this is really good." And then it became really popular. I'm like, "Oh, cool. We're cool." Um, <laughs> and that's how I became cool. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> um, since and and I've just been a big big fan of the series ever since. Um, but as far as after the, now the film's out or now that we've been working on the film, um, I've really had a lot of opportunity to like think beca because I had to think so much about where Peter was coming from. I had the opportunity to actually think a lot about the characters that people just don't like. Like part of me, part of me, a very small part of me. Uh -oh. <laughs> understands oh, like an eighth of your soul that much part of you yeah <laughs> oh no Voldemort totally get that that makes complete sense <laughs> no uh <laughs> oh, okay. all right go on <laughs> it gets where people are coming from now I'm now I'm deflated I'm sorry. um but no I I 
I thought about Peter, and so I, 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 I have. A, I feel like I, I can more understand characters in general because of this process, that are, that are sometimes seen as just bad, and. Uh, I mean, who was it though? What about your What about my pedigroupies? Oh yeah, <laughs> I didn't want to talk about that. I got fans. People like me. Um, <laughs> Hashtag pedigroupies. Seeing him in this film allowed him to create a level of humanity never seen here except for one tiny moment, and then he his hand killed him. So that's what's that's what was so much fun about Peter's seeing his his the beginning of his descent. Okay, I I I kind of understand where Umbridge is coming from. That's what I was trying to get at. Whoa. I'm not saying I agree, but uh, there is a level of understanding. I'm legitimately impressed. Like, yeah. She's still the worst. Don't get me wrong. That's all I wanted to say. Muggle No. <laughs> I like cats. Wow. <laughs> I feel like I learned a lot about you in this <laughs> question and answer. This is, I mean, I get it. He is a Slytherin, guys. Oh, yeah. that's true. Uh, well, now I've forgotten the question. Uh, oh, let's I see. It. Harry. Oh, good. <laughs> Thanks for repeating it. Uh, I got into Harry Potter when I was like a kid. You know, we read it in school. My librarian read it to me like one of the first chapters, and I was into it, and took it home. And my whole family would read it together. We'd buy the books and we'd read them out loud to each other, and then we'd get Jim Dale to read the books to us, and then we'd hoard them away and read them again ourselves. A lot. I read these books a lot as a kid, and they were great. Um, so the opportunity to do this was magical, and it was really fun to kind of go in and make one of the characters sort of my own and interpret it. So now that we finished it, um, it's awesome. It's really fun to meet you guys and like hear how this film affects you. If it does, if it doesn't, it's just I'm glad that it's out there and getting people thinking about things in, in different ways. Um, and now every time I reread the books, every time James is mentioned, I have a, like I don't know. I get a small little smile in my heart because it's like I, I get it. Like I, I had a chance to sort of put his shoes on for a couple days and I can kind of look at it from a different perspective. So it gave me perspective on something I've loved since I was a kid. Yay. Succinct. You see how that, that was works? That was nice. <laughs> that was real nice. <laughs> I, I was late. Did I just push a button? Are we, I think we're good. I didn't push a button. We'll find out later. It's still fine. Straight, right? okay, yeah, it's good. Um, I was super late getting into the series. The first intro I had into Harry Potter was going to the Dollar Theater because there used to be such a thing as a Dollar Theater and uh, watching Prisoner of Azkaban. And that was like my first, whoa, what did I miss? Like it, everything was, was kind of a blur. And so Harry Potter to me was too cool to get into. Uh, uh oh. Harry Potter for me was too cool to get into when it was right off the bat because everybody was doing it and everybody knew everything. And I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna sit this one out. <laughs> I find it that's I'm that way as an adult though. Like Game of Thrones, I know nothing about Game of Thrones. I'm really bad when it's really big, hearty series, series, <laughs> series like that. Um, but no, after after you know, coming to my senses, realizing what I missed, uh, having read everything, having watched everything, and then in sequential order, which is really helpful to get the full effect of everything. <laughs> Very helpful. Um, and then after having done this film, I preparing for the film, kind of like what Zach said, I went through fan art. I went through fan fiction. I, I dove more heavily into the series. So it wasn't just a surface fandom anymore for me. It was now like, a, I know, holy cow, I know everything. I know everything. I know spells. I, I need a wand myself. Like I And I have jewelry now. So now I feel like a... That was I, the final it, the <laughs> As a girl, I kind of, I have jewelry now. Yeah. I got a freaking time turner necklace. Like, I'm part of this now. Um, me and Hermione were like that. So as a result of this film, I, I feel honored to have been a part of it. I feel super special when people contact me and like Justin said, like, you are Lily Evans. Like, this is exactly what I would have pictured. And it makes my heart swell so much because it's a, it's a privilege to be a part of something so special across the board. Fans are incredible. And, and what makes the Harry Potter series so incredible is the fans, I think. It's the, the camaraderie. You guys incredible. I did. I'm looking to you guys. Because you're you're so communal and you're so cohesive and yeah, everybody's got different opinions, but that that's what makes us human. So it's a privilege to be a part of the fandom of Harry Potter. Aww. Passing on. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, oh, really? I'm done. No, I'm done. It's fine. Uh, so the the question was what was your first <laughs> impression of Harry Potter? Like Just what was answer. your first well, my, fir my first 
moment with Harry Potter was my mother suggesting it to my brother who was not a reader and like was trying to convince him to read and be like a lot of people like this and me going that looks cute <laughs> and like if, if it was called Philosopher's Stone I probably would have felt differently because I love philosophy but I, I looked at the book and I was like oh it's a kid's book and that's great and then my friends took me to see the first movie and I was like I was right it's a kid's movie like it's cute and it's fun but not for me yeah. and then uh, they asked me to go to the fourth movie and I was like I've already seen the first one it was okay so I'm watching Goblet of Fire, and then, like, Cedric dies. I'm like, what did you drag me to? Like, this is amazing and horrible. Like, this is a kid's movie? And suddenly, like, my eyes were a little open. Um, and then what finally did it was a friend of mine uh, took me to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter in Orlando because I used to work in that theme park but left before it opened up. Um, so he, like, showed me Diagon Alley, and I was just surrounded literally by the world of Harry Potter, and I was like, now I get it. Um, and so since then, yeah, completely out of order, been trying to catch up with everything. And I, I've never like, I, I hate that I missed the conversation when it was first out. Um, and thank goodness there's like so much little things that JK spread throughout all these books that you go back and like, oh, I never realized this, like, but 19 years later, oh my gosh, this is, this was a Easter egg. And so like, I'm, I'm getting trickles of it, but I never got to be a part of that like bustling fan conversation talk about little things with the fandom and so being in this movie has like given me a second chance um and i there's a lot of stuff that i'm a fan of but i've never identified with anything before ever I'm, i've always been jealous of people who are who really identify with a story or a character and i've like i've never felt that but now I have, and I, I love, like you said, being part of this community and getting to have these conversations and uh, like be like, yeah, Sirius is like my guy. If I was gonna get a tattoo, it would be something to do with him. <laughs> like, please get a back tat. Back tat. Serious. Like, yeah. Your shoulder blades. Serious back. Okay. Serious back. <laughs> oh man. No, I was gonna say, Kevin. Um, speaking of Easter eggs, tell him about the one we recently found out about the Weasleys. Oh, yeah. Arthur Weasley. Oh, um, <laughs> all right. Then I'll tell it. Um, <laughs> I'm thinking of other. There's a lot of little Easter eggs in our film. That's what you're referring. No, to. no, no, not our no. film. Not our film. Oh, the, the Weasleys in general. We talked about in that podcast. Oh, all right. So yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. um, apparently, all the Weasley kids are named after Knights of the Round Table. Ooh. Like right, yeah. King, King Arthur. 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 Arthur Weasley. And all his so and George his, and uh, Ginny is Guinevere. Yeah. Like it's because it, it's a derivative name, but yeah. apparently they were all inspired by Knights of the Round Table. And yeah. I like all the third legend. I think that was the coolest <laughs> thing ever. <laughs> so yeah, that one. Uh, <laughs> right, <laughs> right. <laughs> Blew our minds too. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, so now we just want to open it up to audience questions. Does anyone have a question? Just raise your hand and. In the back. You? Saw it first. So, yeah, someone in the back down there. Jen all the way in the back. Middle, 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 middle. Middle. Back, back. Yeah, yeah. You kind of answer my question, yes. Um, th it's very much something I thought about because I, I always like always think about how I think we talked about it sometimes how how the the Marauders kind of match Harry's crew um, in in their own way, uh, and yeah, that's that's where he was. So so I've I've always seen him as like a flip coin opposite version of 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 the character, and it's a lot of the things when I was drawing from from the character in the film, I looked at, at the kind of young, sweet Neville kind of stuff and was like, oh, I could use some of that as, uh, as, as kind of a, a similarity jumping off point. Just obviously he goes, he goes the other way. Yeah, you really answered it, but yes, that's actually something I thought a lot about. <laughs> cool. I mean, I know you did too, didn't you? Well, I, not, not with Neville, but sort of, I, I more looked at, um, I wasn't ready for that. Uh, sorry. Uh, I more looked at, when I was looking at James, I, I looked at every person in the Marauders, and I thought, you know, James actually pulls pieces of their personality into himself. You know, he's got the recklessness of Sirius, he's got the thoughtfulness of Remus, and he's got sort of this, like, on the outside looking in that is Peter Pettigrew, you know. And I used that to sort of help me build James's character. So I didn't look at 
the future, you know, kids of the series, I looked at the people he surrounded himself with and what parts of the personality were a part of him as well. So, yes, Kevin, I did that too. Why does uh, Voldemort look the way he looks, given that it's so early yeah. age? All right, so... We get that question a lot. We do, we get that, um, we but get not in person, so this is awesome that you're asking Love it. Love that you asked it. So. Mick isn't here to answer this as enthusiastically as he does, because uh, he and I uh, are, are kind of uh, flabbergasted as to why people ask that, because there's so much evidence in the books that says he was, he was absolutely deformed before he was resurrected. So... Um, 1945, I believe, is when uh, Voldemort, uh, Tom Riddle, graduated from Hogwarts. It's about 10 years later that he asked for the Defense Against the Dark Arts position and has a meeting with Voldemort. And he was described Dumbledore. as having... Um, huh? With Dumbledore. With Dumbledore. Yeah. And uh, he was described in Dumbledore's memory as having pasty skin, bloodshot eyes, pale as, as the snow on his shoulders, um, and very uh, looking a lot older than his age. And he was also losing his hair. That was 25 years before our film, and he hadn't created all his horcruxes yet. Our he, film takes place in 1978. 1978, right. Yeah. So um, there's two reasons. One, we think that he that the horcruxes are the key to his de-evolution, basically. He, his skin got more pasty, he got more snake-like, and he developed red eyes um, because of his horcruxes and the dark magic that he professed to using on himself. Lots of experimentation. So that's the first reason. The second reason is if it were a deformed looking man or in some people's, it's what some people think, uh, a, a handsome young man, which is just factually untrue. Um, and then he turns to Snape and says, you know who, then hard, hardcore Harry Potter people would get it, but everyone else would not. They'd be like, who is this guy? And that, it was very important that we made sure that he was at least 80% there. He didn't have a flat nose. He had a crested nose. Um, and that he looked as close to uh, the Voldemort we know as possible because we got to make the film for people, for everyone watching the film. So at the same time, there's plenty of evidence to say that he was absolutely deformed and well on his way to looking that way. Uh, and finally, when he was resurrected, nobody made a comment as to him looking different. Uh, if he got the, if Peter Pettigrew got the, uh, got the conjuration wrong, I think Voldemort would ha not be very happy with him, and he, we would have one less Peter Pettigrew at the end of Goblet of Fire. <laughs> so, I think he would have just chopped off his nose and given him a big silver one. It's <laughs> <laughs> like a flat silver nose. Yeah. You guys have a question. Right? Of magic. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, good choice in cash. Really, really nice. Thank um, you. I have a question for the director. Uh, how many movies have you directed? And second part of the question. Um, have you, is there anything that you could say to somebody who wants to be a director in the future? Like any advice? Um, like a career director? Yeah. Okay. So I have made about 12 short films. Uh, four of them are fan films. The Greater Good, two Batman fan films, Riddle the Mask and Truth of the Mask. Um, and then Sever Snape and the Marauders. I'm going to make one more short film, which is going to be a proof of concept for my feature film to help sell it and get money. If you want to be a director, um, you have to practice a lot. Uh, you have to learn how to work with people, tell them what they need to know to do their jobs, uh, tell them succinctly, tell them quickly, tell them affirmatively. Uh, if they have a question and you don't know the answer to, then your answer to them is, I need options. <laughs> um, and but most importantly, directing is almost as hard to make a living at as acting. You have to absolutely want it. You have to need it. You have to love it. You and you can't love it for the fame. You can't love it for success because those two. Th one of those things can definitely happen if you push hard enough, and that's success. Fame is not really up to you. It's it to, and you shouldn't want it for fame. Um, so you have to love it like it's your craft, it's your art. You can't do anything else with your life. You can't have a plan B. That's the m only way you're going to be a successful director, which means a director who makes their living as a director. So that's your question. Right there. Yeah, buddy, you. Yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah you. you. Oh. Well, first of all, first of all, big Harry Potter fans. Yeah. Great. I watch all the movies. And I've seen all the movies and know the series. And, and my... My question, my question is for everyone. Okay. okay. Do 
did you did you watch the movies or, or read the books to get inspiration for your characters? Yeah, definitely. I'll start. Um, yeah, calling back to kind of what I said earlier, I. I started with Gary Oldman because of what J.K. Rowling said, so I used him as a foundation. But I kept like double checking stuff with the books, um, and because I, I wanted the books to be like the definitive uh, serious black. And if I was to pull in, like like make a, a concrete decision about serious black acts this way, I wanted the books to support that. Um, but I did kind of watch a little bit of Gary Oldman, just like. When I started like, loosening up with the fighting and uh, Gary Oldman does a lot of twirling and stuff, I'm like, I'll throw that in just because I, I liked what, how it looked. But he had a weird stance when he fought, and I didn't care for that. So I was like, some things, not others. I actually did more visual because I'm more of a visual person, and my background started in modeling. So I operate visually. Um, so I went back to look at the movies and how – Lily stands, how she talks, how she moves her body, because to me that's that's indicative of the type of person that she is. Um, so for me that kind of set the basis of where she's coming from. Physicality says a lot about a person. So if I can get that right, I feel like everything else will be icing on the cake. Um, and because there wasn't a whole lot that she did in the films, aside from small movements and standing in here and there, uh, it was a lot of filling in the blanks, which was really exciting. But for me, I definitely went to the movies first. Um. I started with the books. I grew up with the books, so I love going back to them and rereading them as much as I can. Um, and I focused on what people said about James, um, especially people that hated him, uh, because I wanted to get sort of a full spectrum of, of how he was perceived by everybody else, because, you know, how you leave your mark on people kind of tells how you are as a person. So the books was probably where I started and ended. Uh, I did watch some of the movies just to sort of get an idea, and it's always fun. But the books is where I pulled most of my ideas. Uh, I'm very much on the same track as Garrett. I started with the books. Um, I, I definitely the the adage you know more most more about a character based on what other people say about them. Yeah, uh, is <clears throat> is something that I definitely adhere to when creating a character or working with one. Um, but I did. I mean, I would definitely watch the movies. There were there were certain affectations that uh, from the film uh, that that the that the character it has there's certain like like a little kind of inward withered hand kind of movement that i put in that's kind of more of a nod to timothy spall in <laughs> uh in the harry potter movies that's just there just kind of as a as a form of respect i guess um but mo originally in the books is where i start yep any other questions you um so back to the tom riddle thing um when he was a kid and they show clips of him in the movies, he looks younger, he looks like fine, but if it's only a little time after, then why does he look so different? He's actually 55 years old when this movie oh. takes place. Yeah, he's not a teenager. Yeah. He was a, he was 25 when he applied for the Defense Against the Dark Arts position, and that was 1955. This is 1978, so it's 23 year difference. It's it's been uh, 33 years since he graduated from school and has had plenty of time to work on himself. He had a lot of makeup on over those years. So. <laughs> the way you say that, it's like yeah. to Beverly Hills. Yeah. And worked out himself. I think that's the thing is a lot of people are, are under the assumption that Tom Riddle was young before he was killed and he was actually in his 50s and he was born in 1918. He was pretty he was he was pretty old. He was in his 80s by the time of the Deathly Hallows. He was born in the late 20s. Late 1918, I think. I have he to double check the, the math. In the 20s. He was in the orphanage in the 20s. Yeah, I have to double check the math, but he was definitely older by the time uh, this movie takes place. Do you want to ask your question? Oh, yeah. Um, uh, ambitious project. You guys did a really great job. I wish it was longer. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. So, Man, um, we, we just... Uh, <laughs> this, this is a $26,000 film, and we brought it to the bare bones. It was... I would have been happy with twice the amount and still make the same film because then people would have been paid a little better. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah I mean, I... We are going to make more, though. We're not going to make more films, but we are going to tell more stories. So what I wanted to follow up with was the, um, are you, it's so good, and there's such an interest now. Whenever you watch the movies, read the books, for me anyway, I want to know more about the backstory. Mm -hmm. So have you had any interest from Warner Bros.
brothers or anybody kind of saying, hey, we like what you did, and we're thinking about doing this, or again, are you going to make more of these? Um, my first interaction with Warner Brothers was the legal department asking me not to raise any more money. <laughs> uh, first of the year as well. Happy, happy New year. year. Happy New Year. Yeah, she called me and said, first of all, Happy New Year. Second of all, just to, just so you don't just so you know, you can still release the film. Um, we're actually pretty cool about it. But. I got a I got I definitely got calls uh, not from Warner Brothers themselves. There was a production company on the Warner Brothers lot that loved it and wanted to know what I was going to do next. And I'm keeping in touch with them. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen with them. And that's basically what's going on right now. Is I'm starting to talk to people about a feature film I want to make, original content, uh, sci-fi romance about multiverses. Um, <laughs> You and really as do far like as, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> dude, if I had my way, I would like that's all I would ever do again is just sci-fi. I love fantasy too, but I actually like the way that the the universe of Harry Potter, uh, the Wizarding World is built is is very sci-fi. There's a lot of explanation behind everything. Well, with magic, it's with with fantasy, magic. How did you do that, magic? Harry Potter is just like it's not just magic. There's more to it than that. So it feels more sci-fi yeah. to me. Um, I'm writing a radio play, 12 episodes, that takes place right after the events of Sever Snape and the Marauders and follows uh, James's redemption uh, and uh, the Marauders uh, getting into the Order of the Phoenix and Snape's uh, time at, in, uh, with the Death Eaters and how he falls into it. Uh, both, not just physically, because obviously he joins him because Voldemort says hello to him, but emotionally, how he, re <laughs> how he really gets into it. Can we follow you through the website for the Marauders or how did you Oh yeah, the website, the YouTube page, the Facebook page, it will keep I'll keep it updated. You have a production company page too, right? I do. Broad, Broad Strokes Productions. Yeah. That's got Thank all you. of this stuff. I think all of you is great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks, yeah. Have any of you read Cursed Child? Yes. We have. <laughs> we could talk about it after if you want. No spoilers. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no spoilers. I I I I like, love it. I we, liked we it. it. Yeah. I liked it. Did you like it? Awesome. Yeah. Good. Okay, good. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> good. I, uh, I told myself it? I wanted to finish it by this convention, and oh. then I just didn't, and now it's I'm like really a, mad it's, at myself. It's written like a, a, tele, like a play. It's, I it know, takes you but, four hours. Well, I've, I've got like three auditions I have to pass right, out for. You and your work. Right. Your career. And yeah, go ahead. No, when it, with the rare occasion I get three auditions to work on, <laughs> I'm taking that. Yeah, like, sure. In the back. Yeah, um, I just want to know, what would you say are like top tips you would give to those who want to do filmmaking? And the second question I have, what video editing do you guys use? Like program? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, the top tips for filmmaking as a director or in general? Uh, do both, actually. Okay. <laughs> well, I said I said a minute I said earlier to this gentleman that if you want to be a director, then you have to want it more than anything in the world, and not because you want the fame of it, uh, e not even the success of it. It's because you love doing it. That's really really important. The other thing I says is learn how to be succinct with your actors and learn how to, and and your crew. And if you don't know what you want then have your crew figure it out for you. Um, delegate. Delegate, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, as far as filmmaking goes, find out what you really are passionate about. Find out what you love. If you love to edit, then edit. If you love to direct or be a casting director or a camera operator or a director of photography, find out what like speaks to you and makes you super happy to the point of where you're perfectly okay with a 20 hour work day. Because that's what, that's what very, very often happens. <laughs> I try to keep them down to 12, but it's uh, it still happens. So it's like, no matter how tired you get, you sit back and go, this is what I want. Um, that is the key to becoming successful in film. And then going to LA or New York and actually pursuing it. Or Atlanta. <laughs> Vancouver. Maybe. Atlanta, yeah. Louisiana. Yeah. Not so much anymore. Yeah, Atlanta. true. I think we're down to 15. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're good. Okay, uh, we have a couple trivia questions, Harry Potter trivia, and whoever answers them correctly, we have a Ron Weasley pop vinyl. Yeah. And we have a Harry Potter um, Lego thingy with the little house vials as Ooh. well. Ooh. The house Pretty points. Cool. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. Is it just black Oh. Not specifically. <laughs> oh, Not specifically. That's what it is. It's free. <laughs> so we should. Which one are we going for um, first? Which Which one are we going for first? Okay, I think we're gonna start with. This is for the Ron Pop vinyl. What are Sever Snape's parents' names? You can just say first names. That's fine. 
That's a yeah, hard question. Do you know? Right here? <laughs> He's a junior, right? <laughs> right. So, um, so there is Tobias as his father. Uh huh. And the mother, it's, oh my gosh, it starts with an E. Uh-huh. So it's an E. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> Eileen! Yay! Well done, well done. Okay. Yeah. Greatest second of my life. <laughs> <laughs> so for the Harry Potter Lego guy, um, I like that. how is a basilisk, basilisk created? Oh. Right there? Oh, it's um, a snake egg. Under a chicken. No. Not quite. Oh, so nope. close. Anybody else? You want to try? Oh, it is hatched from a chicken egg, right? Yeah. And magic? <laughs> <laughs> magic, yes. Yes, correct answer was magic. Anyone else want to try? No? no. Okay. So the correct answer is. Uh, a, it is a toad sitting on top of a chicken egg. Yes. Oh. So we have a couple other questions instead. Um, okay. This one kind of relates to one of the characters in our film. Oh, cool. Which one? You'll find out. Okay. What finger did Peter yeah. Pettigrew cut off? You, of which hand? First. Oh. His pinky, his left hand? Nope. Dun, dun, dun. Well. Isn't it oh, sh- his pointer finger left? Nope. <laughs> 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 what? Right hand, middle finger. Nope. Ooh. Right there. In the back. Yep. I'm sorry, can you say it louder? Pinky left hand. Nope. Well, we're down to eight fingers, so. <laughs> Pinky right hand. You want to try? Um, is it this second finger on his left hand? Right yeah. finger left hand. It's what? not? I thought it was. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Do you want to try one more time? Finger right hand. What was it? Ring finger right hand. Nope. Right there. Index finger right hand. Yes. That's yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.